hospitality. People in that day and in that time and in that culture traveled mostly by foot. They walked where they were going and they wore sandals. And when they got where they were going after walking on those dirty, dusty roads, wearing sandals, sweating in the heat, they would arrive at their destination and their feet would be dirty. Dirty feet. It was an act of hospitality in that culture and at that time that when the guests arrived, their feet were to be washed. And that washing was to be done by either the youngest member of the family or the lowest servant in the household. That was a very menial task, was the washing of feet. The guests would sit down, that person would have the towel and they would come and they would bring the basin of water and they would take off the sandals and they would then wash the feet of the guests one at a time and dry their feet with the towel. You will remember John the Baptist when he was asked about Jesus. He said, there is one coming after me whose sandal I am not worthy to unloose. He was talking about status-wise. He said, Jesus is up here and I'm way down here. I'm at the bottom of the barrel. And I'm not even worthy to take his sandals off. Okay. That's how low John said he was. But see, this was the task, as I said, of either the youngest or the least uh, respected of the servants in that household. And so what we see happening here is that Jesus gets up from the table there at this Last Supper, takes off his outer garment, takes off his coat, ties this towel around his waist, brings a basin of water and begins to wash the disciples' feet. And the disciples are going, what are you doing? So he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Because you see, Jesus was the teacher. He was the rabbi. He was the mentor. He was the leader. Jesus answered and said to him, What I do, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Oh, wait a minute. You mean this is like an object lesson? <laughs> I mean, we're not just getting rid of the grime of the road here. Jesus is doing this for a purpose. Peter, who has great respect for Jesus, is saying, you're the rabbi, you're the master, you're the teacher. I'm not going to let you wash my feet. And Jesus, Jesus said, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. It is that cleansing, it is that washing that brings about our relationship with Christ. We are washed in the blood of the Lamb. We cannot come to God in our own goodness, our own holiness, our own good works. It's only through Jesus that we can come to the Father, only through Him. And He says, if I don't wash you, Peter, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to Him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. He said, oh, <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't want to be left out. Jesus said to him, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him, and for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So now we're seeing 
even more specifics that are taking place in this foot washing, okay? He's saying to Peter, Peter, you're, you're, you're already bathed. You're already clean. I don't need to go back and do that again. Only the feet. Oh, okay, watch carefully. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. You know, wait a minute now. We're talking about washing. We're talking about cleansing. We're talking about those that are already the Lord's, that the, the cleansing of salvation has already come, but there seems to be something more. And that is the washing of the feet. And Jesus said, I'm your teacher. You call me Lord. If I can wash your feet, then you need to wash one another's feet. So what we're talking about here, obviously, is an act of forgiveness. An act of forgiveness. And if the Lord can forgive us, then can we forgive one another? The lady study that's been taking place on Wednesday mornings is going through this book on offense, of being offended by someone. And how do you handle that? How do you handle it? I'm going to show you another scripture here. We're going to turn over to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I'll read it to you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love. Whenever you see that word walk in the New Testament, the Greek word is peripateo, and what it means literally is to tread all around, but it's talking about your manner of daily living. How are you living your life on a daily basis? What is your walk? Therefore, be imitators of God. Wait a minute. You mean I can imitate God? Yeah. You say, well, how do I do that? Be like Jesus. Just be like Jesus. Imitate him. See, that's what he said. Have I been with you so long and you don't know who I am? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've seen the Father. And so he's saying, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk, live your daily life in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. You see, Jesus humbled himself. The scripture tells us that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but humbled himself even as a man, humbled himself even unto death, even the death of the cross. And that's what we're seeing over here in John chapter 13. We are seeing an act of humility of Jesus, the teacher, the master, the Lord, taking off his coat, girding himself with the towel, and washing his disciples' feet. And then he tells us, okay, you know who I am. I'm the master. I'm the Lord. But if I can wash your feet, 
then you need to wash each other's feet. Back in the book of Matthew, Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is teaching his disciples to pray. We call it the Lord's Prayer. I prefer to call it the Disciples' Prayer because he's teaching it to them. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Um, a more exact translation of the Greek at that point is forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. Anybody ever trespass against you? Anybody ever treat you bad? Insult you? Say something that maybe you don't deserve? Maybe something you do deserve. <laughs> but you're offended by it. You're offended. You hang on to that? I'll never forgive that. What, 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 what? Never forgive? Is that what you said? I'll never forgive that person. No. Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then he goes right on and says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, then your heavenly Father will also forgive you your trespasses. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Oh. You mean we've got to keep this clear in order to keep that clear? Yeah, that's what he was saying. And that's what we read over there in Ephesians. That we are to forgive one another as God, for the sake of Christ, has forgiven us. We go over to 1 John, John's epistle, first chapter. If we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and do not the truth. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the Greek text, in the original, where it's talking about how if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just. Why is that just? Because Jesus paid for it. Jesus paid for that sin on the cross, and it is only just that it is forgiven when you confess it. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And in the original Greek, that cleanse, there are, there are tenses in the Greek language that we don't have in, in the English language. And that cleansing is what is called present perfect in the Greek. And what it means is an ongoing process. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse 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 us from all unrighteousness. It's an ongoing process. And that's what Jesus is talking about with his disciples. This is his final instruction to them. The final episodes before he is carried away by the mob and crucified. He wants them to know and understand how important this washing of the feet, this forgiveness of each other, as he has forgiven us. It's really that important in each of our lives. Don't let it build up. Don't you know, keep a book. Well, this one, you know. 
Jerry, Jerry, keep it moving. Yeah, I remember when you did this. Don't, don't keep it moving. Don't keep it moving. Get rid of it. I heard this one time. Somebody said, holding a grudge is like taking poison and waiting for your enemy to die. <laughs> Holding a grudge is like taking a poison and waiting for your enemy to die. Because you're not hurting them. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself by hanging on to it. Let it go. Forgive from the heart. Forgive. And that opens the chance to God's forgiveness to us. Let's stand again. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.